All right, everybody, here we go. It is tournament times, my favorite time of year. Very excited to be here at TwoTallToby.com. Before I get started with this tournament run, I'm just gonna go into my profile and make sure that I'm using the correct CAD system on shape. That is what I'm gonna be using for this run. I'm gonna save my changes and I'm gonna go to the link up top here for tournaments, go to the tournament page. And here you see the 2024 World Championship of 3D CAD Speed Modeling is now available for registration. Click register here. I'm gonna click this middle banner here. It says click here to enter to qualify for the 2024 World Championship. And this is where we're gonna see our three challenge drawings. So challenge drawing one, go back to that previous tab. Challenge drawing two, go back to that previous tab and challenge drawing three. So I gave this a try a little bit earlier today. I was able to do it in 15 minutes. Let's see if we can improve that time. We can see we've got the official clock here on the right. So when you go back to this, this uh, main page here, you can see that it says click here to compete. When you click here to compete, that's gonna bring up the official clock. So I've just got this organized a little bit better on the screen here. You gotta make sure that you can see the clock. You gotta make sure that after every completion of the model that the mass is clearly shown and that mass should match up with the mass that's on these these sheets here so 1163 323 grams and 0 0.625 pounds so with all that in place i can clearly see the clock i can clearly see my cad system let's get into it here we're going to click the start button let me just take a quick sip of coffee here hmm i have some good coffee all right, and here we go. Start, and now we're gonna create a new document. So you gotta make sure that you start out with a new document every time. And this first one here is gonna be this slip bracket. So let's get into it here. Front plane, begin a sketch, get normal two, and let's create some geometry here. I'm gonna create a circle here with a diameter of 65. I'm gonna create another circle there with a diameter of 35 meant for those to be on the origin. Let's create a line that comes across here. I'm gonna do a bunch of layout work, I think, with this first sketch. So create a line that comes across here, come back, make that little radius. I'll just make it right here in this sketch. Save me having to go back and make that as a feature later. And we'll bring that up to two millimeters and we'll bring this across to 40 millimeters. And we'll bring this down to some height and then we'll try to come over here and see if we can't get pretty close to tangent. Let's select those and make those officially tangent. And uh, we're going to add an angle dimension here, 15, a uh, distance from the center of that hole across here to 145. And I'm going to make sure that that is vertical and make sure that these are tangent. There we go. Nice black, fully defined sketch. That is what we want. So now we're going to take that, turn that into an extrusion. I think I'm gonna press the space bar to clear my selections and only extrude this region out to a depth of 85. And we're gonna make that symmetric. And then let's show that sketch so that we can use it again for another extrusion here. We're gonna make that go out to a depth of 50 and once again, symmetric. All right, this thing's looking pretty good. Let's go front plane, begin a sketch. We'll do some more layout work here. Uh, let's make our revolve shape here. So we'll make a revolve shape with a center line. I'll press the letter Q here for that center line. And then let's make a regular solid line here to go down to here. And that's gonna be for our rib. So now that's gonna have a location of 125 off center. I'm gonna click this line and the center line to get a double dimension here. And we'll make that double dimension a value of 30 millimeters for the diameter of that circular boss up top. That's got a distance from the top plane here. Looks like my view is a little bit skewed, 75. And then a distance from the center of that circular boss to the rib at 60 millimeters. The rib has an angle dimension and that should fully define that sketch, 40 degrees, there we go. So now I can take that sketch and use that to create both the revolve and the rib. So let's start out with the revolve shape. We'll say that we wanna revolve this region about this axis here, and then we can show that sketch and then we can choose to create our rib feature. Looks like rib is uh, kinda hidden because of my uh, screen resolution here, so I'll just search for it. 
There's my rib, and that is going to be at 10 millimeters, and I'm just gonna make sure that extends all the way up to the profile. Okay, looking good, looking good. Let's add um, a cut extrude up top here. So begin a sketch, get normal two. This is gonna be 40 from the center here. So I'll just use 80 for the total by 20 for that cut extrude. And then that's gonna go remove the rule all. The rule all, there we go. And uh, then we can create our whole wizard hole or our whole uh, 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 on shape hole. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's make that on shape hole here. Uh, and let's see, once again, doesn't look like I see it here on my menus. I'll just search for it. Hole, and that's going to be a counter bore um, that is going to use the dimensions of 12 through. It's going to be 24 for the counter bore diameter. It's going to be six, and that's going to go through all. And then I'll use the mate connector uh, to pick up the location for that. So that looks pretty good there. And now we just need to add a couple of fillets. These are gonna be at 15 millimeters. So fillet here and a fillet over here. Okay, looking good. We're gonna do the final spin for this thing. I think we got everything that we need on this model. I think this is looking pretty good. Right mouse button, assign material. This is gonna come from the TTT library and it's gonna use the 1060 aluminum alloy. And then if we click down here in the corner, we can pick up the mass properties and we can see that we're coming up with a mass of 1163. That's what's on the print. So that model is complete. You gotta make sure that you clearly show the mass at the end of each model. So click here when finished model one. Let's move on now to model two. So model two, we're looking for a mass here of 323 grams. This is sheet metal. You don't have to do it as sheet metal, but you can do it as sheet metal. We are gonna have sheet metal in the tournament. So it's gonna be important that you know how to do sheet metal. You're gonna run into models. This one only really has the initial flange as sheet metal. There's not like any edge flanges. So, um, you know, if you decide to do this one, not using sheet metal, just using thin features, that's fine. But just know that there will be sheet metal on the tournament. There will be models that it will be very beneficial for you to know sheet metal. So make sure that you, you know, you're practicing that if you're gonna enter the tournament this year. So I'll go to uh, the sheet metal. Let's get out of this command actually. We'll go to the sheet metal tool. Here it is, sheet metal mo uh, model. We'll say this is gonna be an extrude of that whole sketch and that is gonna have a depth of 80, and it's gonna have a thickness of three, and a default bend radius of five, and let's make sure that material is going to the inside. And that is the first feature for that uh, sheet metal, this, for that second question. Now I'm just gonna kinda start at one end and work my way across. So let's make a chamfer here, 20 by 45 degrees. So there we go, 20 uh, equal distant. And then I'm gonna make a sketch here on this face with a diameter hole of, 36 and the Ivan exploit is allowed in the tournament, but it's not allowed here in the qualifier. The qualifier, the geometry has to be correct. So even though we could, you know, just punch that hole through the wall and come up with the correct mess, that's not allowed during the qualifier. You have to do the models correct during the qualifier. So just keep that in mind. And we're gonna punch a hole through there. Let's make another sketch here. This one, we're gonna just create a line with a distance of 40, because in on shape, if you create a, a line, you can use that line and use an offset to create a slot. So we could actually locate that line right away. And then the only thing left to do will be to make the slot kind of save some time. there. So locate that, that slot uh, center line, and then we're gonna make this into a slot. Again, if you can't find, if you don't know where the icon is for the command, you can always just use the search tool. And this is gonna be 16 total for that slot and now we're ready to turn that into a cut extrude and there we go cut extrude that geometry through and that is a nice fully defined sketch look like it went blue there for a second <laughs> all right now we're going to create a new sketch here on the uh, very top of the model to kind of cut away some of this excess geometry so we'll create a new sketch here on the very top of the model that's going to have a dimension from this end at 48 millimeters it's going to have an angle dimension of 30 degrees and it is going to have a width of 20 millimeters and now we're going to cut extrude that through all just kind of remove everything there just rip that right down the side of the model that gives us that little uh, area that's kind of bending in a bit and now we need to create this area here where we're removing uh, it's basically a rectangle shape uh, so this is going to be 30 by 20 
and then that's going to have a dimension of 20 from this edge as well. So 20 from that edge as well, and then that's going to get removed, and it's going to get removed to a depth of 30. There we go. That gives us that shape. Now we just need to add our fillets and our holes, and we should be done with this one. So this one's going to have a radius 10, because these are 20 total. So radius 10 on those four edges. And then we're going to create, I'll just do this with a sketch. I know we could do this with a hole as well, but um, you know, whatever, whatever works for you, whatever you think is going to be fastest. Remember, you're trying to qualify in the top 16. Uh, the top 16 are going to qualify, but if any of them cannot make it, we will go to an alternate list. So um, even if you're not in the top 16, you know, if anybody from the top 16 can't make it, you still might be in. Okay, final spin. This part looks pretty good. Whoops, let's do the final spin out here so we can see it. This part looks pretty good. Let's assign a material here. This is going to come from the TTT library. Remember, you can use the uh, on shape feature script to auto generate the mass of all three materials. So you don't have to use uh, the apply material. It could probably save a lot of time if I was using that feature script. But here we can see that the mass is coming up at 323, and that is the correct answer. That is what we're going for. So click here when finished model two, and we can close that document and begin a new document for Q3. Now this one is in inches and pounds. So in Onshape, we have to go in here to uh, workspace units and make sure that we set our units to inch and then our mass here to pounds. That way we will be ready to create uh, the correct calculation. And again, if we use that feature script, uh, we can maybe save some time. We're looking for 0 0.625 as the total mass of this part. So let's see if we can get this one right. And we're going to start out here with a sketch of essentially the cross section of this part um, because that is the um, revolve methodology. When you're doing a revolve, it's good to create the cross section of uh, what you're trying to create. If you happen to know any of the dimensions while you're creating this initial sketch, it will definitely help you to save some time. So that's, a, that's always a good uh, technique, put in you know, whatever dimensions you can as you're getting started. And then um, this is a revolve, so maybe it makes sense to have a center line here. So we'll press Q to turn that into a center line. And then we're using the S key to bring up that, that uh, kind of fly out menu that's showing up there. So there we go, three make this one two and we'll make this one here 1.5 all these dimensions are coming from that print and then we could go down here for our total height of 2.75 and we could say that our wall thickness here is 0 0.5 and our wall thickness here is 0.5. So that takes care of that first sketch. We can turn that into a revolve. We can say we wanna use this as the axis. And there we go, that's pretty nice. That fitting is starting to look pretty good. Now we're gonna create a sketch for our bolt circle, our BC. Uh, our bolt circle is gonna have a value here of four inches in diameter. And then we can just drop a point right here directly above the origin. And that way we will set ourselves up to create a hole. So I'm gonna click that point I'm gonna jump into the hole command. And once I jump into the hole command, I'm gonna say this is gonna be a counter sink. The counter sink diameter here is going to be 0 0.250. The counter sink uh, C sink diameter is gonna be 0 0.55. The angle for that counter sink is gonna be 82 degrees. And so that takes care of that feature. And now we could jump into a circular pattern. We could say we want this to be a feature pattern and that the feature pattern is going to be of this feature here. The axis for the pattern, we can just choose a circular edge and then the number of instances is gonna be six. So now we're down to our final couple of features. Maybe we'll take this plane here and offset it to a distance of 1.5. That'll give us a nice sketch plane to create that kind of tombstone shape. Um, we can create a line that comes up here like so, come back, touch the end point, come around with an arc, a good shortcut to remember when you're creating, uh, you know, line arc line. You can not only create the line arc line, but you can also add the dimensions for that. We could take this line here and this edge and make them coincident. We could take the center point of that arc and the origin and we can make those vertical. And then all we need to do is add a dimension. So dimension from the base here to the center of that arc at 1.75. Now we're ready to turn that into an extrusion. I like to take this and just go up to face and we can take that up to this face here. That should give us the results that we need. And now we're ready to create our final hole feature. 
So we'll create a hole here. This is going to be a counter bore, and the parameters for this counter bore are going to be 0.5 through with a uh, 0.910 counter bore to a depth of 0.250. Now, actually, this isn't going to be through. I misspoke there um, because if we push this thing through, it's going to punch through that back wall there. So instead, this is just going to go up to next. So we'll change that to up to next. So it only goes through that internal wall. And then we can hit the green check mark on that one. Give this thing the final spin. I think this is looking pretty good. Final spin over here. Yep, looking pretty good. And then we're gonna go to our assigned material. This one is gonna use the TTT material of ABS. And we'll hit the green check mark. And then we click down here in the corner for our mass properties. And we see we're coming up with a mass of 0 0.629. That's not right. That's supposed to be 0 0.625. So what did we miss there? Not 629, so we're not done. We can't stop until we get this mass correct. So we got something wrong there. What do we get wrong there? Uh, let's see here, 0 0.5, 0, da, da. We got the depth correct, 0 0.910. That one looks correct. Now we're gonna take a look at this guy here. Uh, 0 0.625 for that radius. That, that looks correct as well. 0 0.675, nope, 0 0.625, there we go. Okay, let's try this again. We click down here in the corner. We click this guy 0.625 as the mass. That's what we were looking for. So we're done with model three and we've come up with a total time here of 14 minutes and 26 seconds. I think I could probably do a little bit faster than that. I think that uh, having that mistake there at the end kind of cost me. So I think I could probably do a little bit faster than that. But, you know, we'll we'll leave that for now. Maybe I'll come back in in a couple of days and try this thing again. You could always try over and over and over again. So I have read, understand, and agree to all the tournament rules. And I'm going to submit this run. And we see that that run now shows up on the leaderboard. So like I said, I did, I did this a little bit earlier. Came up with a time of about 15 minutes. Um, looks like this one is going to be a little bit faster. We are obfuscating these times, uh, so you know it makes it a little bit more exciting. We get to see uh, who's you know who's in the top three or four, but beyond that, it'll be anybody's guess who's you know what time you have to beat to get into this tournament. Top 16 are going to qualify. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this video, I'm going to post it on YouTube, and then I'm going to go into my profile here. And in my profile, there's a section where I can submit the video recording of that entry. So here's that 1426. I can click here and add that video entry, and then everybody will be able to see my run. So that's it for today's episode, today's run on this leaderboard. Good luck to everyone who tries to qualify for the tournament. The first tournament matches will begin August 30th, and I am super excited to get into tournament season. Good luck, everybody.